Um, I'm trying to get the computer to cooperate so that we can have our presentation. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, where am I? Call the board meeting to order, 7 o'clock. Um, today is March 18th. Let us stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Clerk Trapp, could you please call the roll? Bartholomew? Here. Edwards? Here. Fowler? Yes. Kerr? Here. Parker? Present. Rousseau? Here. President Posnanski? Here. We have all seven present. Okay. Sorry, one second. Let me make sure our presentation can work here. Okay. Um, moving into the approval of the agenda, I do have some items to uh, adjust. Um, first, I would like to strike our closed session. Um, as the meeting progresses, you will understand. So, no need for our closed session. Um, under new business, I would like to add two items. One being a legal update from Mr. Clark. Uh, he was um, at a meeting, or what should I say? Not at a meeting, but at the a hearing. A hearing. Thank you. Today, and I would like him to give us an update on that. Yes. Do uh, F. And then. Also, we could add a letter G under new business. Uh, we need to set some meeting dates. I apologize, I had left this off. Uh, for our strategic plan explanation, presentation, um, I can go into that further when we get there. But if we could add that to G under new business. And that is what I have. Do we have a motion? Um, I have a couple of additions to um, old business. Update on the out-of-date police vest that, we're, that we've been attempting to order for the last couple of years. You want to put this under unfinished? Yes, because um, I think we talked about that before. When? A couple of years ago. You know? I would consider that. Let's right, just we'll throw it under new. new. We'll go into business. Then. H. Um, yeah, H. Because that would not be anything that this okay. current board had looked at. All right. Then under old business, the update on the engineering from the newly annexed property on Powell Road. An update on that. Can you say that again? Update on the engineering. Update. As far as the uh, distances between the property. For what property now? Um, it would be lot six, would be 750 feet. Oh, so this has to do with marijuana? Yes. Gotcha. And on the third one would be the update on the search for the police chief. And um, one more on the... Um, you do know that Tuesdays prior to the meeting, you can add items to the agenda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Adding them at the meeting is understandable, but... Okay. You have four well, additions here. Here's one of the things here. The update on the uh, trustee email. Because they, they can't seem to get that straight out in order to submit the information to. You can use any email. Do you own an email? <coughs> well, we'll add that to it. And then the last would be the update mm -hmm. on the sidewalk reimbursement yeah. from Mr. Tar. Are these all going in unfinished yes. business? Would any of these be actually pertinent to tonight that we could not hold off until next month? I think they all need to be talked about. They're all current. I'm not saying that they don't need to be talked about, but an update on a sidewalk, that there's nothing going to be done tonight about that. No, no action. Mm -hmm. So we could hold. Well, where is it? Where does it stand? I mean, we've talked about it before. 
what's going on there. And that's okay. where we're kind of in the dark. I understand here. the question. I'm just saying there's nothing pertinent to it this evening. Okay. Need to find out some information. Is this a new business? Uh, this would be yes. under unfinished. The one on new business was the uh, police. The police vest. So just B. B underneath. Okay, so let us, is there any more? Yeah, sorry. Um, we too had uh, new business, um, wastewater agreement, Tom's refers. So we're down to L. Can we get like a, a read through? Yeah, I'm gonna, what's new and what's when we're old. done. Okay. Are there any more? Going once. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as recently edited. Can you list out your motion, please? I need to include that in the motion, all the edits. I don't know how we're gonna Here, break I'll, it up. I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, a motion to approve the agenda with the striking of the closed session. We have an addition under unfinished business of sidewalk update. We have additions under new business of legal update, strategic plan dates, out of date police vests, updates on engineering of lot six, update on police chief search, update on trustee email, and wastewater treatment plant talks with Bruce. Subcommittee. Does that cover it? Okay. That's all new business? Yes, that is the motion. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought that was I'll unfinished. Support. Okay. Okay, I have a motion by Posnanski, support by Parker. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have any opposed? There's none opposed. Okay, moving into our approval of the minutes for February 26, 2024. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from February 26, 2024. I'll support. So we have a motion by Parker, support by Edwards to approve the minutes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Do we have any opposed? <clears throat> there are none opposed. Okay, moving into our approval of the bills. We have two sets of bills, one in the amount of $38,833.71 and 122000 $169.42. Do we have a motion to approve the bills? I'll make a motion to approve the bills. We have a motion support. by Parker and a support by Edwards to approve the bills as presented. Could you call the roll, please? Parker? Yes. Edwards? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Bartholomew? Yes. Rousseau? Yes. Care? Yes. President Posnanski? Yes. Motion carries 7-0. If you could note in there, your treasurer did put her update for our investment. We have north of $60,000 gained so far. Moving into our presentations. Ms. Foland, let me get this working. Good evening. It's warming up. All right. I always print one out just in case. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Well, thanks. Good evening, and thanks for. Having, uh, having me back and having us back to make our update for March. Um, and I'll just let you go to the next slide if you would please. Um, just a review of our, the green space on Prospect Street, GSOP's vision. 4.6 acres of public green space per preserved in perpetuity that welcomes everyone that's universally successful, low maintenance, low cost improvements with native landscape um, open space, places to socialize, exercise, and relax. Um, 
to look at green infrastructure to manage stormwater, and to have a focus on educational opportunities, um, sort of uh, going on with the educational history of the property and a complement to the historic village. And um, just a bit of history, I promise I won't read you all these words. Um, from 1855 to 2020, um, this land was a place for learning, starting with the Dickinson Institute and ending with the Romeo Middle School that was demolished in 2021. Uh, in April of last year, Romeo citizens began organizing to talk about the future of the property and requested the um, Romeo Community Schools, the Board of Education, to pause the process of and to consider alternatives to development. And um, very happily in November, the school board resolved to, and I quote, pause any future RFP process through June 1 unless a viable offer is brought to the board of, by community members, which the board elects to consider at a public board meeting. Um, and then in December was really when our, when our group started formally our organizing and um, set the goal of preserving the property and started the work of raising a half a million dollars towards its acquisition. And we are very grateful that in January, this board passed a resolution that um, if we raise the needed funds, you would consider its acquisition. Um, we got our, uh, established our relationship with Four County Community Foundation, um, the Green Space on Prospect Street Fund. And then at our board meeting last um, time here, the Village Board did indicate that you were looking into other alternatives, potentially partial development. And then we met uh, with the Green Space Committee where we discussed that you felt that you were doing your due diligence to look at those different options. So that is the history up till now. Here's where we are. We are about halfway there. We have raised $175,000. Actually, it's 179 as of a couple hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> Even as we speak, it's coming up. Um, we have about $60,000 left in our match and our target of $500,000. So we're about halfway there. I think we're making great progress. We've got meetings set up in the next few weeks with potential major donors. Um, we've gotten a lot of interest to, you know, some folks that say that we'll help you get to the finish line. So it's very, very positive. Next slide, please. So the question is, how do we get there in the next 2.5 months? Um, and we just talked about that when we attended your Green Space Committee meeting this week. Um, we're really concerned about the time frame. We've always had a concern about, we have, you know, if we have $500,000 worth of pledges, how do we convert that to money that purchases the property? Do all of that by um, June 1. So here is what we, are looking at now. In March, we're focused on information. We have ordered an appraisal for the property so that we actually know what the market value is. We're gonna work on estimating development and maintenance costs so we have a sense of what it will cost in the future. And then just continue to communicate with you, with the entire community, with the community schools, and with all the other entities that may be, um, have an interest in it. In April, we are working with, looking at, we're looking at the potential of working with a conservation buyer. And this is an interim buyer that brings their own funding in, secures the property, and then gives us a specified period of time to fulfill all of those pledges. I mean, they would need to see that we've gotten to the point we need to be at, but they would also need a commitment from a local entity to be that final owner of the property. And that is what um, we will probably come back and hopefully talk to you about in April. You know, here's what that agreement would look like. Is this something that you are interested in? Um, and then in May, hopefully we can secure the property before June 1. And, um, and then June and after that, fulfill those pledges to the, into the Community Foundation to fund the sale of the property. That money it, uh, fulfills the purchase from the interim property owner to the final property owner within that specified period of time. So that's what we're sketching out right now. Um, any questions about that or any thoughts? 
It's a way to get the job done. How do you hear from the schools? As far as the um, All we hear from the schools <clears throat> is that they have no plans to um, do anything different than what we've already agreed to. Yep. So the year you're done. Mm-hmm. Yep, and we're keeping them informed as we go. Good. Yep. Um, next slide. I've got, of course, these links will, won't do you any good in the um, PowerPoint, but Six Rivers Land Conservancy is the local land conservancy that has a municipal assist program. They're the primary people we're talking to about this sort of arrangement. There's also national organizations, the Trust for Public Land, and the Conservation Fund. Um, if you want to look up those organizations, this is the kind of arrangement that's done really, really often in order to secure a property, folks that can come in and do that for you, and then you um, gives you the time to write the grants, raise the money, cash our pledges in, whatever. Um, and then I also, uh, as a resource, the National Trust for Historic Preservation, the This Place Matters uh, um, campaign that they have that we've started to adopt. Um, upcoming events, we have a monthly community meeting, and April 19th, we have a big event at the Abbey on Main where we would love to see you guys there. It's gonna be so much fun. We're gonna be focused on the history of the property and the potential future of it. Next slide, please. Uh, a report on, do you remember I brought you the invitations last month to the Gray House um, major donor evening? Very successful, it was attended by about 80 people. We raised $80,000, got some really nice coverage from the Macomb Daily and we had a really, really good time. Uh, next slide, please. And this is just a look at some of the coverage that we had. The Macomb Daily did a really nice article, and the Record also did an article just before that event. And, uh, and this is information about our event coming up on Friday, April 19th. Tickets are available on our website. They're $50 each, kids under 12 are free. Um, we have a historian who's coming in to do a deep dive on the history of the property. Uh, we are um, <coughs> aligning ourselves with StoryCorps. We're gonna have a listening booth and invite people to share their stories. And we're going to do some interactive imagining of what it could look like at the green space of live music and a raffle and good food and a lot of fun. So I encourage you to come. And to summarize, this place matters. And there's a group that shares um, our feelings about that. And uh, this is how you get in touch with us. There's a QR code. And I'd like to summarize by saying, what does success look like for GSOPs? Success would be a 4.6 acre um, passive recreation park for the people of the area, Romeo, Bruce Township, Washington Township, um, acquired with the Romeo Community Schools, fairly compensated and at no cost to um, any of those communities and with um, a long-term plan for maintenance and phased improvements. And we think that would be a great thing to have. Anyway, that's what I've got. Any questions, any thoughts? How do we get in touch with you to, I, I can't get a picture of that, so I can't really um, read that. But I can shoot you an email. Okay. Yeah, be happy to. Yeah. Thanks again for your time and for letting me come up here and give you an update. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Donna. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to our correspondence, we do not have any. Now we move into public comment. Uh, this is the time for the public to be involved in our meeting. If you would like to speak at the podium, you have three minutes. You can speak about anything you'd like, uh, agenda or not. Hi, uh, I'm Dan Griffin, uh, 300 Yule Street. Uh, grew up in this town my whole life, love this town, and uh, I just wanted to talk to the board about 
Uh, two things right now that I care about that I see are opportunities for this village, and uh, I just hope not to see them slip by. So uh, the first one is I have a friend who's applying for the police chief job. He's, uh, to say the least, overqualified um, for this job, but he loves this town. He's been here 30 plus years. He could be anywhere in the world doing almost anything he wanted, but he wants to be the police chief here. And I think if you guys don't hire him, um, it's a missed opportunity. And um, same thing with the green space. Um, I was really sad to see my middle school get torn down. Um, and I'll be sad to see a bunch of houses be built there on that property too. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities to keep that 4.6 acres. Um, even if it's not the whole 4.6, there's a lot of things to be uh, considered there, but if I'm gonna choose 14 homes or none, I'm none all day, you know, green space would be great. So I fully support the uh, green space on Prospect and uh, I just want you guys to know that and see these as opportunities like I do. So thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Tam. Thank you. Any other public comment? <clears throat> Hi, my name is Angela Trelfa. I live on Fox Ridge Lane in Bruce Township. And I just wanted to say I love this community. Um, I wasn't so sure when I moved in here many years ago how I was going to fit in. Um, and everybody is so warm and welcoming that it was the best decision that I made for our family. Um, I've been active in the school district um, with my children. I have one left in the district. She's an 11th grader, and we've done the early college program. All I can say is good things, and I talk about how wonderful the district is. When I saw the middle school come down, it also was heartbreaking to myself, but I realized maybe someone made these choices for a good reason. I still would like to know those reasons. However, um, I, I guess what I want to say is um, the love for the community doesn't stop in the village. Even though I'm a resident of Bruce Township, I love everybody within that village, and I want the best for all of the community, including those for Washington Township and Bruce. So I think you guys are doing a very wonderful job following up, th up through this, and um, I want to see good things to come. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more public comment? <clears throat> Hello, I'm Sarah Casper. I'm actually a resident of Bruce Township also. Um, I wrote a little something because I feel as though I'm gonna stutter over my words otherwise, so bear with me. I'm sure I'll stutter through this also. My husband, Brandon, is a Romeo graduate and our children will also be in just a few short years. We moved to the village of Romeo in 2005. After the birth of our daughter in 2008, we decided to look, started start looking for a larger home to fit our growing family. Brandon taking a full-time position with Bruce Township Fire Department made choosing a location to raise our family an easy choice. Even with the housing market and economy being a challenge, Romeo was where we wanted to grow roots. Unfortunately, as many of you remember, the economy was a challenge for buyers and sellers. When our current home went on the market, we went for it. No, it wasn't in the village as we wished, but it was a hop skip from it and that satisfied us. As long as we could walk to town, we didn't care if our address said Bruce instead of Romeo. 4065 is 4065. We may not be village residents, but we are surely community members. Our children attend Romeo schools, my husband works for our fire department, and I have donated my own artwork to the village because we do believe this place has to have strong ideals. The people and places are what make Romeo so wonderful. We must focus on the people that make up our community now. We must focus on the lands that sustain us as well. This place matters because these people matter. A village green is never a wasted space. I support the, villa the green space on Prospect and hope others will as well. There's so much beautiful architecture and history in this village a naturally beautiful historic space in the heart of these homes would complement our roots nicely. It would also show positive growth in more than just tax revenue. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have more public comment? <clears throat> I'm Sue Post. I live on St. Clair Street. I grew up in Romeo, and my family has been here for five or six generations, so I definitely have deep roots here in town. I am very interested in the green space being preserved. Um, I enjoy going to Stony Creek and to Seven Ponds for years because I like the outdoor space. I think it would be wonderful if we could have that same green space here in the heart of Romeo. I, in my mind, I can picture the students from Amanda Moore walking up Hollister Street, stopping at Amanda Moore's house for a brief update about what the wonderful things that she did for the village of Romeo and then going on to the green space. I think it would be great if we could have our own Walden Pond right here in our historic Romeo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have more public comment? Oh, got to take her. <laughs> well, I'm Glenn Hummond, and I live at 200 Church Street. And I'm basically going to say the same thing I said at the fundraiser, you know, last week or week before. You know, the development being offered for this property is not reasonable, doesn't fit, and is a bad situation for this village. It's 17 salt boxes. I was in the moving business for 40 years, and I'm telling you, these type of houses are lower end in cost, which generates high turnover in a transient neighborhood right in the middle of Romeo. Every three to five years, all 17 of those salt boxes are gonna turn. That's what it's gonna be. That's what subdivisions are. They're constant churn and turn. And I did that for you know, the better part of 40 years. And that's what we're getting ready to drop, what the school board wants to drop, right in the middle of an historic village that, histor that generally speaking, is at a very stable residential uh, make up over the years. Another <clears throat> point that someone had made uh, after I'd spoken last time, and this is an excellent point, I wish you knew the guy's name, but he said, look, what happens if we walk into a situation like 9, 10, and 11? Well, they're in the middle of trying to put this mess in, okay? All of those, we had dozens of developments in Macomb County that went bankrupt during the financial crisis. You know, the builder doesn't go bankrupt. The development is set up as a separate corporation. It goes bankrupt, which means when they walk and leave six to ten skeletons of houses uncomplete and four acres of tore up ground, ditches, no roads, nothing, they go just like this. And they walk on to the next thing until a developer, another developer gets the money together to come in and buy it at a discount and then maybe complete it. We could be looking at two to three years of destruction right in the middle of the village if we ran into a economic circumstance like that. So the green space is the way to go. It's just a difficult, it's just a difficult path to get there for the steps we have to go through and the money that needs to be raised. But residential development in that spot, you know, it's just it, what's being proposed as regi residential development has got a lot of pitfalls and, and you know, as, as everyone has said uh, repeatedly, just isn't a fit for the village. So that's all I got to say. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to close public comment unless I have anybody else to speak. Okay, I think we're good. Closing public comment. Moving on into our officer reports. Um, I guess let's start with our trustees this evening. Nathan, I never start down on your end. Nothing at this time. No? Nope, I have nothing. Shelly. Um, just had one meeting with the um, subcommittee for the green space and with the green space crew and um, a tree board meeting. I'm good. Nothing? Mr. Fowler? I'm okay. Mr. Kerr? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess we move into our planning commission ex officio. Do you have a report there? Not, not tonight, no. Just proved yeah. a few things, but nothing to save time with. Okay, um, treasurer included her um, update there in the packet. Clerk Trapp. Um, 
Last week, I assisted in facilitating a pre-bid conference here at the Village Hall for those interested in bidding on the Village Hall restoration project. Nine different restoration companies were present to review the building and ask questions. The bid deadline has been extended to um, Tuesday, March 26th. Had a meeting with the engineering firm working on the cemetery, cemetery road project and the construction company that was awarded the bid. Construction is slated to begin mid-April and is hoping to last about four to six weeks. All roads in the cemetery are being repaved. President Posnanski and I sat down with our accountants to review the first draft of the new fiscal year budget. Reviews will continue to have an updated draft in time for the scheduled budget meetings. I have a message to those trustees that have not updated their emails and have not reached out to me for their new passwords. Our IT department can meet with those that are still having issues logging on. Please reach out to me to set up a time. Yard waste pickup begins April 4th and that runs through Thanksgiving. And also with that, um, spring cleaning has begun and just a reminder, residents are allowed one large item per week for pickup without needing to make a call or advance reservation with the office. That is what I have. However, unless you would like to put a piano at the curb, I would prefer a oh, call. Okay. <laughs> that is one large item, but a call would be appreciated. And they did, just to know. Well, it was so. a piano, okay. It was a piano, and actually, we worked it all out, but somebody took it before they even got there, so even better. <laughs> Romeo is golden for good garbage pickup. I do, too. Okay, um, President's report. Um, starting off, our Eagle Grant. I'm excited to inform the council and the village that Romeo was, in fact, awarded this latest grant that we applied for last month. I have yet to receive the notification of the amount. If it was the full award that we asked for, that is $361,000. Um, I will keep you up to date as I get more information to confirm how much we got if, um, we know we got something. Um, for the schools, this past Thursday, I was able to attend the academies at Romeo Key Partners second annual retreat. Uh, we enjoyed a wonderful lunch that was created and executed by the culinary students and was followed by a tour of the school and classrooms. The day was finished with a presentation update on the academies and a group work session. It was also encouraging to see our SRO, uh, Officer Bauer there in attendance. For our executive search, as I stated last month, the application posting closed on February 23rd at 4.30 p.m. Since then, at that time, the village received a total of 10 applications. I coordinated an interview panel comprised, comprised of fellow respected local community chiefs. These chiefs included Richmond, Armada, Imlay City, and Dryden. Of the 10 applications, five were offered interviews, which were conducted this past Monday, March 11th. Interviews consisted of 20 vetted questions and each were scored by our chief's panel of subject matter experts. These interview scores revealed the top three candidates, and I have followed up interviews with each of them. These next couple weeks, I will be doing the appropriate background checks and will be prepared to offer an appointment to council at our April meeting. Romeo received executive top quality applicants. I'm encouraged to see the future of Romeo and our police department. And on that note, I would like to say thank you to Chief Sokolnicki for his service for these past years, as April will be his, um, what would you call it, handing over of the badge? Is there like a <coughs> term for that? Um, so thank you, sir, for your service to this community. Enjoy your retirement, and know that the village will be well taken care of. For our fire and ALS subcommittee, we will do that at our subcommittee report. Um, the EV tip that I mentioned with the addition, we need to set a date for the group meeting and presentation. An exciting thing to note there is that the village has also been given another grant of another $100,000 to bring some of the chosen projects from this strategic plan to fruition. Find it somewhere. Um, our update on our Great Lakes Water Authority contract. Um, if you recall, we needed to renegotiate that um, pending seeing the full year of 
what it did to uh, our contract and our usage with Ford being gone and not using the facility. And at that time, um, it was discovered that we were being billed incorrectly and that the village was due a credit. Um, I'd want to update the board that that credit has been received and realized on our account. We were credited $23,238.26. Portion of that was applied to our January, January bill with a few, like $4,000 and change, correct, left on um, for usage still. Um, St. Baldrick's this past weekend was an immensely su successful event. It's exciting to have this back in our village. Um, I do not know the grand total as of yet, but we can at least be confident in 100,000, and it's north of 100,000. So that's exciting. Um, and on a personal level, as your village president, I'm excited to have been chosen uh, for the Women's Elected Leadership Intensive. This is a five-week course hosted by the Michigan Municipal League. It is a new um, course. And as always, I strive to continue to educate and learn in order to better ser serve our village. That is my report. Committee reports, fire ALS. Uh, we met last Thursday, a couple hours was our meeting. <coughs> Would you like to speak on it? I've, I've said a lot, you can what? have what? the floor. <laughs> There's a lot of back and forth talking. Went over basically the same stuff that we, we saw last month, and uh, I don't think Bruce is at this time willing to give any, any more or at all, so. We did ask, Trustee Rousseau asked for, currently it's proposed at a 10% <coughs> annual increase. We did ask for less, um, just so you know it's been mentioned. Um, we, what else did we mention that we, so I you asked. <clears throat> Are they willing to bargain? No, no. They're not, it's, uh, they're, they're, they're set at a number. Uh, if we don't sign, they have said that they're going to go back to their residence for at least another mill, half a mill for the fire, half a mill for the ALS. So it comes out to about 480000 that they'll be short without the village. Um, so they said they were going to ask their taxpayers for another million? Another mill. Mill. Another mill, which comes out to about 480000 Gotcha. Um, yeah, they, they, they said that their operating cost is the same with or without the village, basically. We really don't add any cost because their personnel saves their personnel. Oh, that's what they said, the million. They were going to have to cut the budget by yeah, a million we're be cutting, next uh, year. If we don't stay, they'll be cutting to try to get down to the number that they need to be at. So. Also asked for list of services to be included in the contract said they could do that if we really wanted, um, but I don't know, I feel, I feel a bit of pushback on that yeah. for some reason. Um, they kept saying that uh, you, get, you get everything we have, or everything we have, well, can you, what is that? <laughs> and they didn't want to put that down. Yeah. Already. Good service, it's not about the service. No, no negotiation on you know, <coughs> fast or anything like that? Or? Is there a chance that we could lose those services from them? Well, if we don't sign a contract, yeah, we don't have it. So if I heard you correctly, they would go back to the Bruce Township residents for 480000 which is essentially what they would be losing from the village that they need to maintain. Mm -hmm. Yes. But yet they're asking us for... Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would put that statement to that, that amount of money, um, but that's what the budget would be short. So if we're not there, their budget is short for $180 million. For $80. Million. So, excuse yeah. me, you're right. Ooh. Thousand. Yeah. I know, <laughs> thousand. Yeah. If we do sign <coughs> them for 800000 850. $850, they've collected the 480 that they're short, plus another 400, yet we don't add to the operating cost? I believe no. that, inc did that include our, our 550, that our contract? 
Like no, that was on top going of back it. If we don't sign, we're going moving forward right now under the assumption that we haven't, had, we don't have a contract. So they were going back and going to take another mill from the construction place. It doesn't need to be loaded on the site. They already have that fire and they lost mill edge. If they'd be acquiring another mill, um, Mr. Clark, right? You were going to look into the coverages of Bruce and Washington Township at one time. Were you able to come up with anything? Would they still be responsible for <coughs> Bruce's side of Romeo Washington for the Washington side? They, they would not be responsible on a contractual basis. They may have some responsibility on a moral basis that okay. let's help our neighbor, which is what they both townships often say. Uh, and the other part of it is uh, they, there may be some requirement on mutual aid, but. Uh, the, the mutual aid requires, as the uh, two words indicate, uh, mutuality. And I don't know what uh, the uh, mutual uh, part of the mutual aid the village would contribute. So uh, I don't think uh, for planning purposes that you can assume when the contract expires that it will continue uh, in the manner that it has. Uh, what form or shape the service, if it exists at all, might take. I don't know, but I don't think you can uh, plan on it being just like it is. So as long as we have nothing to offer, <coughs> mutual aid doesn't apply. Well, I'm not saying that, but uh, the, the, there's, uh, the reason the term mutual aid is used is because people depend on one another. The common, and I, I don't even know if it's common, but one of the examples of mutual aid is if there's a huge fire in one community, say Ray Township, that they can call on Washington and Bruce and Armada to come and help. Well, the, the, the village doesn't have a department of its own to contribute to that, is right, my, my point about yes. the mutual aid. Well, just for conversation purposes, I, I was at a barbecue with um, Armada Township Supervisor Paderak. He stressed interest in doing collaborative with us. Just to put that out there. Okay, that is our subcommittee report. I assume we will be having another meeting. Our pilot committee. Still haven't met yet, but I know, did you mention to me that the DDA is looking Oh, correct, into I was supposed to mention that during my report. I okay, forgot. yep. I apologize. So you and I briefly discussed that last week. So would it be appropriate? Let me appropriate? give the update. <laughs> Pardon me? Want me to give the update? So the DDA oh, oh. <laughs> has um, asked that the committee consider uh, removing the pileup um, ordinance. Um, at the time that they had discussed it this past Monday, I told them, no, oops, I apologize, it was Wednesday because of the dates, um, that they were past the time to be able to get on this current agenda, that I asked them to kind of gather their thoughts and their plan and their ask and bring um, a full report presentation to next month. Okay. What to asking them what exactly is their intention and detail that for us. So just so the committee, the council knows, mm -hmm. the DDA will be asking that. Thank you. Okay, our GSOPs committee. Um, we have nothing really new to add to it. The presentation really covered everything. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it, we did receive some new information as far as maybe how the GSOPs group wants to pursue acquisition of the property. Um, so initially the thought was they would gather pledge money and s somehow transfer it to us once that pledge money is guaranteed and we would go to negotiate with the school board. It seems like that's not the case now that there will be the in interim... Um, conservation buyer, which eliminates the necessity for us to really even go to the school board. Um, so just, just as a part of our, our subcommittee meeting and with our conversations with GSOPs, really all they express to us um, at this point is they just want our support. Um, and that if they're able to acquire the property, purchase it from the school, they basically not need us to say yes, we'll accept the property and they can transfer the property at that time. 
Um, that takes a little bit of the legwork out of our end. I think it sounds a lot better. It sounds a lot safer. We're not dealing with any taxpayer money or putting any of our financial interests on the line. Um, I think it's a really cool idea and it eliminates a lot of risk on our end. Right, and as Donna stated, they'll be coming forward for that support probably in April. Right. Um, and I did speak at that meeting that I question if we still now, knowing this new information, if this subcommittee is still pertinent as our committee was formed to, well, well I wasn't initially on it. Um, you guys formed the committee to do negotiations with the school. Since the whole view of how this is going to be walked down the road has changed, I question the, ne the necessity of the subcommittee. So um, we chatted about it and I said, we'll bring it up at the council meeting and it can sit on here every meeting with no update from us, um, but I also think, what's the point of that then? So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's up to the council. I, I, I agree with you that yeah. our original intent of having the committee isn't really there anymore. We can just add an agenda item if we want to discuss it. Um, I'm sure there'll be future presentations in the future. If they have okay. something they bring to us, we add it to the agenda and we can discuss it at that time. So, I mean, in light of it just being a placeholder, I think that's fine to eliminate the, the subcommittee. Right, because anything we do next month will need to be in business. Right. At, at this point, I don't think we intend on meeting before the next April meeting anyway. Right. I'll make a motion then to <coughs> dissolve the GSOB subcommittee. Okay, we have a motion by Parker. Second. Support by Fowler. We have all in favor of uh, s dissolving the GSOP subcommittee. Say aye. 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 Do we have any opposed? No. Or okay. I opposed. One opposed by Edwards. Okay, down to two subcommittees. Well, for now. Okay, unfinished business. Let's start with our dates for the road asset management basics for paved <clears throat> roads. Last month I presented to you this free presentation um, that will inform us just a little bit better on how to take care of our new paved roads. Um, the dates that were offered at that time were in conflict, so I went back and asked for a couple Tuesdays. So we have Tuesday, May 14th or Tuesday, May 28th. What is the feel of the council? I'll do either. Um, 14th sounds good. 14th sounds fine. 14th would be better. Yeah. Yeah, look at my dates. yeah. yeah. 28th, you talk about pretty much what Memorial Weekend and things yeah, like that. After Memorial, yeah. Yeah. But 14th and, 14th and same time better. frame, 7. Yes, yeah, 7 p.m. Yep. 7 p.m. Okay, so let's go with May 14th. I will touch base with them and set that up. That will be here in this room. That will be a public meeting. Um, all are welcome to attend and Supervisor Metz, <laughs> we ask that you attend. <laughs> Not to put you on spot. Um, I, our second added item to unfinish, the sidewalk update. Could you elaborate please, Mr. Yes, Edgar? I was just, um, I know we had talked about that before. There was some work done to the Tarn Associates building. Um, it was a verbal contract between um, Mr. Tarr and our previous president. And there were some funds that were supposed to have been paid to the village and so far we haven't collected those funds. Correct. And the uh, last conversation I think was there was some legal actions or we hadn't taken any. I guess that's- We that's have not we initiated have. any. We haven't? No. So what's our next steps? What are we gonna do? Is money just gonna <coughs> sit out there or we're not gonna collect it at all? Um, that would be actually that's a question for the treasurer since she collects the funds and she handles any invoices and or outstanding invoices. Look, you've been in office what almost two years? Two years? And the money's just been sitting out there so nobody's trying to <coughs> I guess that's that's where I'm with the update as far as we need to know is it gonna get paid or is it isn't it gonna get paid? I guess that's that's the question. Okay. Okay, moving on to new business. We have our Arbor Day proclamation. Um, I shall read our proclamation. Um, this I'm sorry. Um, the others that were underneath old business or new business? Right? New. New. Mm -hmm. 
A proclamation by the president of the village of Romeo, Michigan for Arbor Day. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Arc Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are, are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and beauty to our community. And whereas trees in our village increase property values, enha enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and provide character to our community. And now, therefore, I, Megan Posnanski, president of the village of Romeo in the county of Macomb, and on behalf of the village council and the tree, Romeo Tree Board, do hereby proclaim April 20, 26, 2024 as Arbor Day in the village of Romeo. And I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. Further, I further urge all citizens to plant trees in order to promote, not in the easements, um, the well-being of this generation and future generations to come. Dated this 18th day of March, 2024. Could I have a motion to support the proclamation? Motion to support. Support. We have a motion by Parker, support by Edwards. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have none opposed. Um, moving into our animal <coughs> control best practices. This is in here. Um, Macomb County has updated their policy. Um, we do need a resolution. Mr. Clark reached out and said we do need a resolution in order to adopt. What we would be doing is um, adding this into our ordinance. Um, it just bolsters our ordinance, allows the support of the animal control from Macomb County. We've ran it by Chief Dan. He is um, says it's appropriate so we can it was a pretty lengthy document, so I didn't know if you guys wanted to look at it for a month, consider, or just um, have us write up the resolution and bring it back next month. Was there any major changes that you noticed were, were added by Macomb County? Oh, Lord. Mr. Clark, did you get the chance to review? I've looked at this. I have not compared it uh, section or provision by provision with the existing um, uh, Macomb County uh, best practices, the animal control best practices that the village has adopted. Um, I can do that. Uh, there doesn't seem uh, to be uh, anything in here that um, strikes me as uh, being uh, untoward or inappropriate, but uh, I've not compared it to uh, the most recent version. I'm, I'm not sure when the council last uh, approved this or adopted it, I'm, and Chief uh, Sokolnicki may know, but I. I think it's probably been about five years, but I'm not certain of that. I, I don't think it's something that you've done every year. And, and again, Chief Sokolnicki can weigh in on this. My understanding in dealing with uh, the animal control people at Macomb County, which I don't very often, is that if you don't adapt their uh, best practices, if you don't adapt their rules and requirements, they won't come out and deal with the animals. And uh, I, I don't know if that's true the chief may know that but if that's if that's the case you you typically want somebody who's trained in taking care of animals in difficult situations as opposed to having a police officer or a, a fireman do it uh, it can turn out well but it may not so uh, i think the animal control the relationship uh, is a good one to preserve it, it basically defines the I like when they tell you that you, you, know, you use the live traps, you catch a groundhog or something, they tell you, just take him to the edge of your property and turn him loose. I go, oh, he comes right they back. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Chief, <laughs> Chief, can I ask how often do we call on the animal control? I call them twice. Uh, anytime that, uh, that we have to deal with uh, animals that have to go somewhere, we call them on How often do you think that happens? But 
we don't we don't do it often or we do do it often? Um, it's, it's rare. It happens a couple times a year, you know, maybe 10 times a year. You're saying so they'll come pick them up? <coughs> Is that, so that what I just heard? They'll only come out during business hours. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll try them again. Uh, <laughs> they come out for, for the homes that have too many cats, uh, you know, dogs and things that were outside for long periods of time. Uh, You said they'll come for raccoons? <clears throat> uh, we ran them out for raccoons that were, uh, that didn't seem right. You know, they were out there in the day, and there was something that just didn't quite enough home to come out and stuff like that. So, so if residents catch a, catch a live on a live trap, they can bring it up to our police station? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's saying that. Well, they, they show it for you, son. Yeah. Well, Rust, Rusty Howell used to do it, yeah. but I, I, I don't know if he's interested. They just tell me, take him to the trail, turn him loose. <laughs> Comes right back. Okay. Okay. So, well, I did look at it. I mean, our ordinance is a page and a quarter. Theirs is 33. Yeah, because a lot of it is, it, it's yeah. down to an expensive type thing yeah. where something's got to be euthanized or, uh, you know, there's a dog bite or something like that. They, uh, they're the ones that take care of that. And, and I think that's why I asked, because I have had raccoon issues um, well, yeah, where they, they weren't acting right. Yeah, we, we <laughs> oh, over the village. Pardon me? We don't have any traps. No, well, no, I wasn't asking for a trap, but I also got declined by animal control to yeah, come well, and... Well, there's got to be some reason. Just because there's a raccoon... It, he was spinning in circles on my front lawn with foam <laughs> coming down his mouth. <laughs> literally, literally, like this, all like day long. Maybe, so I wanted to clarify. Maybe that our ordinance they do wasn't updated. Because th there, they had there, told there, me no. Disease, disease should have been, there's something that should have came out Okay, so if we adopt know. this, that will maybe yeah, help solidify that, that more. Call. So we can bring him up to the police station. Yeah, we got to no. All right. okay. I'll make a motion that uh, we accept the animal control best practices. Could we rephrase it as a resolution, please? I'll make a resolution that we accept the animal control best practices. Support. Does that satisfy Mr. Clark? That's fine, okay. yes. I, I, I think uh, you, you may have to either send uh, uh, the, and again, I, I don't mean to keep sloughing it off on Chief Sokolnicki, but you, you I think you'll have to send a resolution or maybe a certified copy of it to animal control. I don't know what their protocol is. They just want to know that when they come out, uh, that that the village is bound by their rules, by how they proceed and, and what they do. So, so would it be best if we waited yeah. until next month and had something in writing that we are, or is this fine? Uh, I think if you pass a resolution okay. and you uh, contact them and send them a copy of your minutes, minutes. including the resolution okay. that and they accept it that's fine if they say oh no we need a formal ordinance or if you want to wait and find out if they need a formal ordinance I think in the past uh, we've just or the council has just adopted it by resolution okay. but I my memory could be failing me on that I point well, they would require a copy of the motion yes and that's so that it yes okay support okay so we have a motion by Edwards support by Parker uh, all in favor aye. Aye. aye do we have any opposed there are none opposed so clerk track clerk trap will write that up and get it sent over yes. okay our east side roads proposal um, finally got a proposal this is what's going to be put out um, to be able to be bid on, uh, did request attendance um, of our engineers, did not get a reply. Um, so this is what will be put out. Do you have any questions that I could take back um, as I really won't be able to do too much detail here? Just to clarify for everybody, it's the northeast quadrant, correct? Whole east side. Whole east side, okay. If you, um, yes. On that first map. We'll be doing it similarly as we did with the northwest is we're gonna phase it. Phase one will be the southeast. 
Phase two is the northeast. So some things will be done in tandem as they have that certain equipment out. Um, but the initial, uh, the focus will be on phase one and securing that as that's obviously coming into Peach Fest into August. So we want to make sure that's all done and out of that quadrant um, right there. That is also where some of our grant money of the 250, well, all 250 will be spent either in phase one or phase two. So as that comes in, I will bring it back. We'll get our um, quotes or our proposals of cost. Not gonna lie, makes me nervous. Is this for information only? Any projected start? Uh, <coughs> you know what he did? I'd have to look at my email. He did send me like their um, hopeful schedule. Um, I'd have to take a minute to look, but. But like May or June? Oh yes, soon. Okay. Like yeah. this is gonna be awarded in April. Okay. Right, and in, in moving quite <coughs> after, yes. No. Okay. This is what I got. Okay. So you're gonna put this out to contractors to get the information back on. How long are you giving them to return the their bids? Well, it will be on our April agenda, so it will only be out for a week, eh, a couple weeks. It's tight. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, everyone's itching. And our um, pro line who did our uh, first phase over here on the west side um, was eager and asked to just sign on for the east. However, we needed to put it out properly and not um, just continue. So hopefully there's at least one interested party. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, our wastewater treatment plant purchase. Um, we have a, Al, did you want to come up? A sampler pump purchase. We do need two of them. Uh, you can see the amount there that's being requested. The total is $13,388. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Good. And we got our new generator. We did get our generator, but now we're waiting on some new bids for installation because the last we did uh, we got one bid on the installation and it was uh, laughable really really expensive these people didn't even come out look the job they just sent a so we're gonna have to rebid that so anyways these two pumps are sample sampler pumps uh, we have uh, four different uh, sample pumps in the plant that send uh, flow continuously to a uh, refrigerated sample unit that, can, that uh, takes composite samples throughout the day, and the following day we run, uh, run those for different things for, for all of our different analytes. Um, uh, these two pumps are very old, and uh, the, the casing is, is so corroded that the, uh, uh, the seals, uh, the mechanical seals don't fit in there properly anymore, and, 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 and uh, we're getting leaked by, and uh, the only thing to do is, is buy new ones. <coughs> so um, I'm asking tonight to, to purchase these two pumps. It is in the budget, um, just needs approval as the dollar amount is over approved spending threshold as a supervisor. How long did the old pumps last? We've rebuilt these pumps several times, but they've been there for 40 years. <coughs> That's fun. Are the other two pumps? The, the other two pumps are, are newer. They were put in in 2008-ish mm -hmm. when we did the last update. And this is the same style pump, just a pretty yeah, much. Yeah, the only reason we got one bid is because we want to put the same pump back in, just drop it, drop it in, okay. um, versus trying to replumb everything. Okay. And then it's the same company, and everything should line right up. Mm -hmm. Great. So it's the same brand. So no one else makes a pump that will line up with. The housing? Not exactly. We're going to have to do a lot of replumbing and moving things around. Um, it's just the easiest thing to do is to take the, the pump, pump we got and it'll drop right in there. They're good pumps that last a long time. What kind of installation cost are you looking at? We'll do it. Okay. Do we have a motion? Do we need to prove in an amount 
in excess of what's listed here because it doesn't list tax. <coughs> We're tax exempt. Tax exempt. Oh, government well, entities don't get that. That's nice. That's I'll awesome. make a motion to purchase two sampler pumps in the amount of $13,388. Support. <coughs> so we have a motion by Parker, support by CARE for the purchase in the full amount. Could you call the roll? Thank you, Al. Parker? Yes. CARE? Yes. President Posnanski? Yes. <coughs> Rousseau? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Edwards? Yes. Bartholomew? Yes. Motion carries 7-0. Okay. Now into our IRP. Um, last month I briefly reported on that we had a break over there um, and it was looking that it was going to cost, uh, the, it, the initial from the company that made, created and put installed last time um, was 50, 50,000. Um, I asked him if he could kind of find another quote of which uh, he was able to find us this one. This is in the amount of $31,925. That's better. Um, the $50,000 one also had, I can't recall, 20 or 30 weeks lead time. They are not in the state. They'd have to come in, um, multiple other things. The current one is in state, and we're only looking at a two to three week um, time frame. Do I have a motion? You're good with it? I'll make a motion. I'm looking for the mount. Oh, there it is. I have to read this whole thing. We just motion mm -hmm. to purchase in the amount of 31925 For the I for the um, filter panel PLC upgrade. Yes. That's important, right? <clears throat> I was looking for the wording. I couldn't find it. <laughs> is it in the budget? It will be in the budget. <clears throat> it, it is, we have money for it. This is a necessity. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's yeah. practically an emergency yeah. purchase. <clears throat> is that the only total? 31000 Correct. Yep. Okay. The back page is the other one. Yes, correct. correct. Yeah, yeah, that was the other one. Okay. Um, so we have a motion by Parker. Support. Support by Bartholomew. Could you please call the roll? Parker. Yes. Bartholomew. Yes. Edwards. Yes. President Posnanski. Yes. Rousseau. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Care. Yes. Motion carries 7-0. Thank you. Um, now we're moving into all of our new added. Um, our legal update. I spoke with Mark Clark earlier and asked him if he would reiterate the update from the uh, courtroom today. If you would, please, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Uh, earlier today, this morning, I was uh, at a motion hearing. You may recall, I don't know if all of you were on the board, but uh, a number of years ago, it may have started in around 2015 or so, uh, there was uh, a disagreement over the use of property at the end of Dickinson Street behind and next door to Mr. Fowler's property. Uh, the, uh, a number of citations were issued by the Romeo Village Police Department uh, because of the use of the property. It's zoned uh, it, uh, residential, it was zoned industrial and so if that use continued it would be non-conforming property and that use could continue. Uh, the village took the position and I think rightfully so uh, that it uh, could not continue to be used for industrial property uh, and tickets were issued. Uh, we uh, had many uh, hearings at the district court uh, out on 33 Mile Road. Uh, at some point in this process uh, the owner of the property, actually I believe there are two owners, one is uh, a limited liability company, Trailside, and the other is uh, Robert Rogers. I, I don't know if one owns one piece, and because I believe there are two pieces there. In any event, uh, the Trailside is Mr. Rogers' company, uh, and uh, he uh, sued the village, uh, and uh, we claim the village did that uh, there was no basis for the lawsuit that the property was being used uh, improperly. Uh, its industrial use was improper. Uh, it could only be used for residential property. Uh, at the time, 
Uh, and I think now, chronologically, we're about in 2018, perhaps, uh, maybe 2019. Uh, in any event, um, he sued the village. Uh, the village responded that uh, it couldn't be used for industrial uh, purposes. And uh, the Macomb County Circuit Court Judge, uh, Diane Drazinski, uh, agreed with the village that uh, it could no longer be used for industrial purposes. The, uh, Mr. Rogers uh, and uh, Trailside, they appealed that to the uh, Michigan Court of Appeals. The Michigan Court of Appeals uh, overturned uh, Judge Drazinski's decision and said that uh, it had never stopped being industrial property and under Michigan law, not statutory, but under Michigan case law, uh, a property owner could continue to use the property in the manner that it had been. Uh, the council uh, authorized me to uh, seek uh, a, an appeal to the Michigan Supreme Court. The Supreme Court refused to hear it, and so the case went back to the Macomb County Circuit Court, uh, and there were uh, several uh, times we appeared at court. Uh, there were negotiations between uh, the property owner, his lawyer, myself, uh, Mrs. Malzahn at the time, uh, was representing the village and we reached a settlement agreement and it was brought back uh, to this board uh, to uh, consider it and uh, the board uh, we, it was discussed in closed session. Uh, the board went in open session, voted I believe six to one, it might have been five to one, uh, uh, to approve the consent judgment. Uh, it was entered uh, in, uh, I believe, 2000. Well, I can tell you, I don't have to believe anymore. I'll just tell you when it was entered. Uh, in uh, 2019, and I'll just tell you exactly when. Uh, October 29th of 2019, there was a consent judgment which uh, this body had approved. Uh, you, Maybe not all of you were on the board at the time, but it was a proper action by the, the Village Board of Trustees. Uh, Mr. Uh, Rogers, then in the last, oh, probably six months or so, um, I, I, I got a call from his lawyer a number of months ago, three or four, but I believe Mr. Rogers had started before. He wanted to put a fence around the perimeter of the property, and that was part of the consent judgment that he could put a six-foot fence around the property. It's spelled out in the consent judgment. And uh, Mr. Rogers wanted to put a chain link fence of six feet in height around the property. Uh, he was denied that request, and I think, again, appropriately so. Uh, and uh, so he, through his lawyer, they filed a, a request, a motion to the court, asking that the court enforce the consent judgment and he be allowed to uh, put up a six foot chain link fence. Uh, I uh, responded in writing to uh, Mr. Rogers' motion. Uh, I think the wording in the consent judgment is very clear. Uh, there is a drawing that's attached to the consent judgment. It's uh, uh, attached as an exhibit. Uh, and the drawing, the purpose of the drawing was to pinpoint where Mr. Rogers could put a gate on the way into his property. The, the, the purpose being that the village didn't want a gate either at the curb or didn't want a gate at the sidewalk, that it had to go back farther to the north in his entryway into his property. That was the sole purpose of the attachment of the drawing. The drawing also did contain some other uh, items with respect to the materials that would be uh, used for the construction of the fence. Uh, and uh, in my opinion and my belief, uh, none of that applied because, again, the whole purpose of attaching the drawing was to pinpoint the, uh, uh, the, the point of the gate or the placement of the gate. And uh, there were a number of um, versions of the proposed consent judgment that were exchanged uh, after I had discussed this in closed session with this board uh, and the board in open session had, appro had approved the uh, parameters uh, and the uh, provisions that should uh, be in the consent judgment. And the, uh, and the consent judgment is a matter of record. It's on file with the court. I'm sure there's a copy in the village offices. Uh, and the, the operative paragraph or the, the, the paragraph uh, by which Mr. Uh, Rogers brought his motion 
Uh, it specifically says, uh, and I'm not going to read you a treatise, but this is very short. The plaintiffs, that would be Mr. Rogers and his company, shall be permitted to install at current grade level a, per a perimeter fence of no more than six feet in height. So we conceded the six feet, and part of the reason for that uh, was that uh, he could have a six foot privacy fence, but he'd have to get the consent of his neighbors. And given the uh, complexion of things, uh, it was unlikely that he was gonna get the consent. Uh, and so that was one of the concessions that the village made that he could have a six foot fence. And then the other sentence says, plaintiffs may install a gate on the north end of the entrance way where the entrance way meets the six foot perimeter fence as depicted on the attached exhibit B. And the exhibit B shows uh, the fence uh, and where the gate could be. Mr. Rogers claims that those two sentences allowed him to install a six foot chain link fence. And I oppose that on behalf of the village, uh, uh, particularly because chain link fences, uh, while they're allowed in the uh, industrial area, six foot chain link fences are not allowed in the residential or the commercial area. I believe you can have up to an eight foot fence chain link in the industrial area. Uh, but again, hearkening back to the Court of Appeals and uh, uh, Court of Appeals opinion that it could, it could be uh, used for industrial purposes, but it could not be used any more extensively for industrial purposes than what the prior owner, a Mr. Claire Hout, uh, had used it. And there was no chain link fence around the property then. And so I opposed his motion. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, Mr. Um, Rogers was able to obtain, I got this on Friday about three o'clock in the afternoon via email. There was an affidavit that um, Mrs. Malzahn signed uh, saying that uh, she had been the president of the village of Romeo, uh, that she participated in the negotiations. Uh, those things are true. Uh, and uh, the two other provisions in her affidavit uh, it was uh, always her, uh, Mrs. Malzahn's understanding that there would be a six foot fence. That's true, that was everybody's understanding. That's what I represented to this body uh, and that it would uh, go around the perimeter of the property. That's true. Uh, what uh, surprised me greatly was uh, in uh, Mrs. Malzahn's affidavit, it says it was her understanding that the six foot fence uh, referred to an exhibit B uh, did not have any restrictions on the type of material to be used for construction, but uh, held a pro prohibition of barbed wire along the top, um, and that Mr. Rogers was proposing a hot-dipped galvanized chain link fence. Um, first of all, uh, there, there's no prohibition on barbed wire in the consent judgment. There's no need for it. You cannot have barbed wire on fences in the village of Romeo. And so that, that was a surprise statement to me. Uh, and then uh, the discussion of the material, uh, Mr. Rogers never said anything about a proposed hot dip galvanized chain link fence. Those words are on exhibit B. That they're on exhibit B, but they're not referencing the fence. I mean, they are in the exhibit, but in the judgment, what's the, the purpose, the sole purpose of exhibit B is to locate or pinpoint where the uh, uh, gate will be to the fence. Uh, so uh, I made the presentation to the judge. Uh, judge Drazinski said that she did not think Mrs. Malzahn's um, uh, affidavit was uh, relevant, which I urged her to come to that conclusion. She said she didn't think it was relevant, and she uh, didn't uh, said she hadn't read it. Uh, I take her at her word. There's no reason why uh, she would uh, be less than forthright and truthful with me. Uh, and, uh, but the end result is uh, uh, the judge held that Mr. Rogers can put a six foot high chain link fence around the property. So uh, he's gonna probably come into the village office and request a permit for that fence. Under the judge's ruling, the permit will have to be issued. He's gotta comply with the ordinances as far as filling out the permit application and the particulars. He, he, he doesn't deviate from uh, the ordinance requirements, uh, but he's gonna be allowed to put a chain link, six foot chain link fence uh, around uh, those properties. I have a question for you. Sure. So according to that court document, 
supposed to comply with the local ordinance, correct? Which yeah. is non-conforming. Right. So the fence, the fence has to be back as far as the the front doors of the two houses, the several houses that are, that are there. I mean, sure, it can't be right up on the sidewalk like you said. Right. He he's, he has to comply with the with the ordinances and the the concession the concession at the time the consent judgment was entered into, the concession was uh, to allow for a six foot fence. That, Th that was the concession yeah. because, it, and then, it, it, and it, the other part of the concession was, is that it would be around the perimeter because uh, he could have applied for a six foot privacy fence at wh whatever would be considered the backyard of that property. Mm -hmm but he'd have to get his neighbor's consent or he'd have to come to this board. Uh, and, and it was, and I think rightfully so, it was thought that he was probably not gonna get the permission. So one of the concessions was, yes, you can put a six foot fence around the perimeter, but it would have to be, and again, these words aren't spelled out, but by omission, it would have to be a residential fence. It would have to be a stockade fence or whatever's allowed, not the chain link at six feet, you could have a four foot chain link fence, but not a six foot chain link fence. It's just the location of the fence. I mean, I don't want to be sitting there looking out my front door and I'm looking at the stockade sitting right there. I mean, that, that's, so, well, so that's you, a problem. You, you, so, well, you, I was going to say you may to be our you, According you, to our ordinances, it has to be set back at, at that it, point. He's got to comply with the ordinance. But, but if, if he just came into the village office, he bellied up to the counter and says, uh, I'm putting a six foot chain link fence around my property or I'm putting a six foot stockade fence around my property, that wouldn't comply with the, the ordinances. So if, if it's got to be uh, so many feet off the sidewalk or, or such a distance from the lot line, he's got to comply with those uh, provisions, but he's allowed a six foot well, chain link fence. As long as he's in compliance with that court document, because obviously he circumvented it on different issues, but just make sure that, and I know you're sitting out there, just make sure that you comply with our local um, building ordinance as far as where you're supposed to place it. And I know I have rights to that drive through, so you can't place it right there at that beginning here. I know you have to go back even further. Well, well the, the, the consent judgment uh, addresses that as far as the gate and that uh, there, there there not be any um, uh, fence uh, along there. So yeah. uh, well, the consent judgment also said he was supposed to pull a permit and <coughs> tap into our village of well, water and sewer and pay the yeah. fee, but that didn't happen. You know, he circumvented that, 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 and that that was out of the court judgment also. Well, that didn't come up at the hearing. Too. Yeah, I know it didn't come up. He got around it. So that's the state of things. Okay. So the consent agreement, well, su does it supersede anything that's in the fencing ordinance? It, it does uh, because, okay. uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, if he bellied up to the counter, he yeah. wouldn't get a permit for a six-foot chain link yeah. fence. Right, and we did deny when it was first approached based right. off of that. So does right. it fall into non-conforming in the residential it fencing it, ordinance? It, yes. it, well, yes, yes, but it falls in according to the judge, and the, the judge, uh, she wears the robe, she rules. Mm -hmm. um, the, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the consent judgment doesn't uh, take the place of your ordinances. It, uh, in some respects, it supersedes in a, na in a very narrow way. Six feet, chain link, he gets it. Okay, because the residential ordinance does say you can't have six foot past the front yeah. right. of, that's, the, that's of your right. structure. So right. that, that is superseded. Well, in and, but, but I think we covered that in the judgment anyway, okay. in, a, in a different it's, provision it's of the in judgment. There, but we just want to make sure that it's complying with the, like well, I that, said, that, this supersedes our ordinance, and, but the court did right. cover it. We just make yeah, sure it's done correctly. So he, he, what he'll have to do is come in, uh, and I've not gone through the fence 
permit procedure at the village, so I, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but I'm assuming he'll come in with a drawing and say, here's what the fence looks like, here's where it's going to be, it's on my property, he's got to show you that, it's going to be six feet high, he'll pay his fee, and he'll be allowed to erect the fence, because the judge said he could. not saying he can't, just... The decision was just made today, correct? Yes. And complying with our ordinance. Yes, I, I don't have the order. Mr. Clark, yes. is there anything else in there that would that we should anticipate for the future that might vary from what residential would look like? Other things that this property owner can do? <coughs> well, yes, there? because uh, already there's a pole barn on the property, which is, I guess, some properties in the village have pole barns, but usually uh, there's a pole barn and a house, and so there's no house, but there's a pole barn, and he's allowed to store industrial equipment, things of that nature, whatever Mr. Uh, Clairhout could do. And um, I can tell you from well, see, the- Mr. Clairhout filed bankruptcy, so his, at the end of this, the usage of that property, there was no activity for five right. years before Mr. Right. Rogers purchased. Right. So, I mean, obviously from right, right now, he has increased the footprint of the property, which we understand, but so, according, so, according to the non-conforming use. Are you saying he's encroached on your property, that it's grown into others' properties? I'm saying that he's increased the footprint of his property according to the court document, which says well, the, you're supposed to use it as, as you purchased it as is. But the Court of Appeals said because, and you certainly know Mr. Fowler because- uh, I live there. You, you live there, I live right, there. right. Yes. And it, it, when, when Mr. Clairhout, the prior owner, uh, it, the, the place was really just a junkyard and a graveyard for old equipment mm -hmm. and broken down equipment. But the Court of Appeals said um, that he can uh, engage in what uh, Mr. Clairhout did, the prior owner, storage of materials inside and outside the existing structure, storage of operational vehicles, trailers, and other equipment. <coughs> Excuse me usage consistent with prior usage of uh, Denmick equipment, uh, which was Mr. Clairhout's uh, business, uh, which would include mechanical work, welding, cutting, fabrication, painting of equipment, and so on. So he can use it as industrial property. He just can't expand it. That's the key can word. Can you define expand? Yes. That's well, that, that's a fact-specific thing. I, I can't define expand. So that building can't expand, can't, can't be increased at all. Because well, non-conforming, I, I would argue goes, that unless he goes through the proper steps, right? Of the ZBA planning. Well, committee. but even then, he, he, even even then, the the idea in non-conforming property as the property is used or it it goes into disuse, that it will become more conforming and less non-conforming. More conforming to residential. Yes. 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 That's. That's, what that's, looking that's yes. the idea. Which is why when we were approached with the fence permit, we denied it. Um, when I was approached with the meeting to see if we couldn't clarify or come to an understanding, I stood firm that no, uh, that is not the intent of the fence. I also was sitting on the board, not as the president at the time, but as trustee, and I do recall that it was not conceding to um, the type of material, but to the size. Right. Um, so I said, well, probably best if we do just take it to uh, court and have a judge make the decision and it's final and there we have it. So yes. today was that the decision. Yeah, so that's where we stand. The court judgment is complied with and done correctly. I have no problem, but obviously it's it's been circumvented already. So. Okay, that's so that is our legal update. Thank you, Mr. That Clark. I do appreciate update. that. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Um, moving into the dates um, for a strategic plan um, presentation. I have, as a suggestion, they wanted in the next two weeks. I feel like next week's too soon for everyone to all of a sudden be able to fit into their agenda or calendar. So I'm hoping for either Tuesday the 2nd, Wednesday the 3rd, or Wednesday the 9th. Um, what is the feel of the council I thought, I for the evenings? What, what, are the, what are we going over? This will be a presentation, um, not just of the council, but an invitation to all of the boards. Um, okay. And 
I'm trying to remember, it was in the fall, um, when the U of M, it has to do with the, a strategic plan, we were given a, a type of grant where they would come yeah. in and right. reevaluate okay. um, the loss of, the, the effect on yeah. the village of our loss of Ford and the revenues and such. Okay. Um, so it's been a while, and there's a lot that has gone into it. Um, and I asked them, could you please just come give a presentation so that everyone can understand what this is and what we're getting? This is also where, where comes that $100,000 in grant monies. Okay. So that, what were the dates again, Megan? I'm sorry. Second. The second, third, or ninth? Of April. Correct. I would have second. to go with the ninth. Huh? I, I can do any of them. Ninth. That's what it works to for me. That's a Tuesday. Tuesday the ninth. Yeah. Is that our general? People, I don't know, who might, yeah. may or may not be out of town that week before. Okay. 7 p.m.? Of course. Yep, I, I asked them, I'm like, you're, you're willing to come in the evening, or like any time you need, okay. Um, so this will be put out to all the boards. Of course, it will be a public meeting. Um, <coughs> so anyone can attend. I will hope to get it videoed so that if the room fills up and we do not have capacity or you're unable to make it that evening, any of us or whatever, um, you'll be able to rewatch it and learn along with us. So would we just be, this is a bad question, are we just audience members or is that a, is that going to be a board of trustees meeting that just has that presentation at it? I guess we could phrase it in a way that it's a board of trustees meeting, um, inviting all of the, specifically asking all of the boards to come okay. and join and learn along with us. Okay. Cool. Okay, so we're going with the ninth, right? Yep. Sounds good. Okay. I will communicate that with them. Okay. Um, Moving into Trustee Fowler, out of date vests. Yeah, so it's come to my attention that um, for the past year or so, our police department has been wearing vests old, several years old. And they needed some type of VIN number or ordering number from our clerk and to, in order to write a grant for to the state in order to get some more money to buy them that way. And I just wondering, for, for Trap, what's going on? Um, you don't know nothing about it? Um, what do you mean? Uh, what are you asking? Yes. Um, is there a specific ID number or VIN number that you're supposed to give whomever's working on a grant for the police department to get new vests? Yes. Because our vests are dated, outdated. Yes, and I gave them that number when they were originally applying. Um, as I understand, as of last week they're still waiting could you please close the door i'd appreciate it oh. <clears throat> hey chief can i ask you a question before you leave us well, he's not leaving he's just shoving no, <laughs> thank you no I, mean, I know you weren't leaving oh i meant leave us like gone um regarding those vests yeah. and they're outdated it's the last couple of years or something like that uh -huh. what do we need to do to expedite on our half in order for you to order these things and get them to our officers? Uh, the reason we haven't got the best order is because we've had over, uh, such a turnover in the department recently that until we get a stable department, we have not ordered new vests. Uh, when we do order the new vest, which is you know, going to be this year, uh, we get half of the vest paid for through the cops grant. I just got a video. I, 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 I come up around your station to listen. Okay, so you do have the number and the, and the information. Yeah, we're, just, we're, we're waiting until we got it. We just now hired him on the first one, and we're going to be hiring a police chief. So to order the best when we're doing turnover and turnover and turnover, I, I, I'm going to piggyback here. So for clarification, we're not ordering because we have people turned over. So the current people, current officers, don't have a no, they have, they all up have to date vest, vest. vest, and they're still suitable. They're still yeah, good. They're still, they're still okay. More than suitable vest. Okay. They recommend that you replace them every five years. Okay. But we still, they're still within, you know, spec. Okay. And can we not just, is it a 
size thing, or can we just not order five vests, well, no, six vests? Specifically made for that person. For that person, similar to like an SCBA mask yeah. or something, yeah. sizing. Yeah. Okay. Just Thank you. clarification. So if, like if I ordered one for me right now, it'd be a waste of money. Understandable. And, you know, and we would have ordered one from uh, across the street because we're, we're wasting, you know, money on him because yeah. he wasn't doing the turnaround. And plus, he gets slapped. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so when they leave things. the department, do they take it with them? Huh? When they leave the department, do they take it with no, them? No, we keep them. <laughs> uh, we donated some to. Uh, to the military before, uh, back when I was a fighter and instructor, uh, we actually shot at them to show the officer, you know, the effects of the bulletproof vests and stuff like that. Uh, kept some extra ones in the car to throw over windows and stuff. And okay. And about how much do they cost? Uh, for the whole department, we look at about five to six thousand dollars. I don't know how many are in the whole department, so about. Uh, they take two more. Okay. So, Thank you. You know, that was that was before. Okay, moving on to update on engineering of lot six. Yeah, I have, the reason I'm asking this question is I happened to run into Chester Zakowski this morning. And he was just leaving the village office. I guess he was talking with you on, on some certain things as far as mm -hmm. when this might happen. And uh, I happened to watch the planning commission meeting last week, or the first week of the, um, of the month. And uh, he got up there with his engineer, you know, it's going back and forth, I think, with, with the commission and, 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 and his people as far as the distance. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, uh, he said a quote. I guess he's been talking to you quite a bit, um, Ms. Trapp, and he indicated that, that you said, quote, unquote, the more you bothered me, the slower I'm going to go. That is false. Well, he said that at the public meeting. I know he did, and that is false. But uh, I'm just, so this morning, like I said, I run into him after he left the village office, and he's just wondering what does he have to do in order to get by this, because he brought in over so many acres into the village, and sure, we, we could, whatever we need to do to, to <coughs> help him sell his property to get the, Lots <coughs> plot or whatever to get this thing by so we can get it back on the tax bill and get some more money. But it's, it's just part of that customer service thing that's going on here. And I know you say it's false, and obviously he got up on the public forum and said it's true. So, um, you know. so what do you want to discuss specifically? Um, yeah, what's your question? What's the status of the, of the, of the distance? I understand that we, according to that night, that you, you've had two engineering firms with two different distances. Now you're hiring a third, correct? To, yes. To give you another number? Yes. And each time we, we bring in an engineering firm, one say yes, the other one says it's too close, and now you're getting a third. Uh, he had his engineer with, with the numbers, with a stamped whatever, stamped drawing of, of the distances. Um, those are cost upon us. I mean, every time you hire an engineering firm to do something different, then it's another cost. It comes out of their five thousand dollar permit fee. That's portion of the applicant what that helps pays with. For it. However, once we exceed that, yes, it comes out of other things. Okay, so I'm going to say three of them. That's the third. All right, I just just need to know what's what's going on, especially with the way that. It sounds like you know that, everything that, that's, that's going yeah, on. I have well, nothing else the, to add. The, the the customer service part, if if that's what's being said to any type of applicant, resident, or whatever. Because that's not the first time I'm hearing that our customer service at that office is, is <coughs> something to question here. And then when that came out in the public hearing, I, I got asked the question, um, is this how you're treating residents and, and business people at the office? No. Okay. Well, I, I had to ask this question. Okay. Is, is there an update besides that, I guess? Um, to piggyback again. No. We don't have any. We, have we hired another firm? Yes. 
and we were still waiting on results. Correct. From them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. How long has this firm been out there that we've hired? What do you mean, been um, out there? Uh, you, the meeting was the first of the month, first Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the third week into this month here. How much longer will they be before they get back the information to you? I don't know. I uh, have you um, made a phone they call have, to them? Yes, and I've been in communication with them, and they told me that they are working on it. Working There's a few on. steps that they have to take care of before they can give me their report. Can I ask that also, what, what changed from December? Because I know the Planning Commission in December was under the, I'm going to say assumption, they were informed that all this had already been confirmed. And that was what was presented, I think, by Cindy and our planner. And they said that you had gave them the go-ahead. I did not. I did not. I do not know where they got that information. So I that do not discuss open applications. I try not to, but that fell apart in this application. I do not discuss current open applications. The Planning Commission had their duties to, with the planner, to review the special land use application. Otherwise, that I had no other information to give them during an open application process. So we've had two engineers out. That what's the difference between? I'm not going to discuss that because I um, gave an assumption, um, not having the plans in front of me. Okay. I gave a guesstimate, and now that's all everybody's talking about is that magic number. I don't have that information in front of me. And again, per the ordinance, you cannot further discuss an open application that has not been decisioned. Okay. So you you're looking into because I'm not privy to what they're talking about, but you're looking into whatever that discrepancy was between Correct. the first two? Yes. Okay. Yes. And there's no definite date to have have that information? So we can get like I said, I'm uh, waiting. The engineers have a few steps they have to take care of. Right. We've had, we've answered some questions which revealed more questions, of which we got more answers that revealed more questions. Okay. Um, and we need to do our due diligence. Um, can't let something continue if it's not, a, you can't walk that back. So we're going to make sure that neutral third parties, as many as we need, <laughs> to clarify that footage for us, that distance. Yes, thank you. Okay, update on police chief search. Yes, uh, according to um, the last, last month's um, agenda here. The, the opening was on the 5th and closed on the 23rd? Correct. So you have less than 20 days to do the, the compiling of the applications. So that's basically what, 12 working days? Uh, business days, Monday through Thursday, because there's nobody in on Friday. So. No, we had three weeks. All right, well, 15 days in total. And even listening to some of the residents, or one of the residents here tonight, um, I think the time needs to be expanded more, and and will we get an opportunity to review some of the applications before you before you make a decision? We would like reason why in the past I think the village hired a police chief and there was, the fit wasn't right, and I think we we got terminated. And we understand when was that? This, um, it was uh, I'd say during. Was it Hanson's? Hanson's? The Hanson's? There was, Don't remember there that. Was one, there no. was one chief that got terminated years ago. But uh, I'll, I'll definitely but research back. But I don't believe there's any requirement for the village council to be interviewing a potential new police chief. And, I, I didn't and say we've interview. never done that before. I didn't say interview. I just, we, I'd like to see. Home. I mean, we might have a serial killer or something like that. <laughs> I mean, sure it's, it's, we need to know place. who's going to come into this community. The, the, the police department, the way that, that our past two chiefs have, have it structured, somebody might come in here and just completely just knock everything out of whack because it's not run the way that they want it. And then you got your turnovers flying again. So don't we get an opportunity to look at these resumes? Don't, I don't want to interview them. I just want to see see the person's reactions, how he is, how, you know, what's his demeanor. That's all. That's why I sent you those texts to try to say, you know, let us just see what's going on. But we've had it 
I've, I've updated the council the whole way um, from the time that Chief has turned in his retirement to January where I offered, got three quotes, offered the council to take this out to a third party um, to remove any sort of what could be construed as favoritism um, and asked for assistance as I'm very busy. I can do it and I can figure it out. It will take me more time because I've not had to do this before, but I have. I've taken the time, I figured it out. Um, I updated you, so that was January. I updated you last month in February. Unfortunately, you were not here. I am looking at February 4th. Um, and then I've adequately updated you tonight on the steps so far. So I don't know what else you would like to be updated about. Um, so ultimately, when it comes, comes back and, and the president makes a recommendation on an appointment, the council still has a, a say so, am I correct? Um, well, that's where the, it's just like anything else. Yeah, when I put up an so a name for we, DDA, we to, I put a name out and it's a president appointed council confirmed. Yeah. Nobody is taking right. your power away whatsoever. Yeah. It's just like being on the okay. board. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Last time when we just hired um, the officer, there was no question for anyone to be involved in anything and no one has ever questioned that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did our due diligence. Chief and I both did an interview and chose a proper applicant. We brought him to the floor and you guys approved well, the because there's police, a trust I, I there's a trust there see something Zach, when it comes the back police the is, is, is a different than, than, I than I don't disagree that's why I asked for this to be done a different way Zach well, I wanted and I, I think that that came up that that we want to see somebody from this community have it, you have yet have to been, see my um, applicants yeah. and you do not know if they are from this community or not cool. I value right. the community you, you that said, I do live in, and I would just like to say, as I said in my statement, that we have phenomenal I, candidates. To say to just anything say, less. That's, that's it, but if you have to close, I mean, that's, and not to mention, we're having local, local police chiefs vet and interview these people yes. too. I mean, Qualified how much more trusted of a from, review process from, could be going through? Right. But I, I understand you. But neighboring that will be, need to do work with our chief. Um, communities in, of similar structure and makeup, size. Um, the Rose. experts in the area, they graded. I did not. not Ultimately, Rose. we'll have the final say. She'll bring an applicant to us and we'll have, we'll have the final say, so we'll review the applicant yeah, at that I'm time. Sure, I'm sure it's not gonna just be a name in front of us at that point. I don't sure we'll have any names right now, so I, that's exactly what it's gonna be, a name in front of us. Yeah, but I'm sure we'll have some. You will have support, have proper have supporting, documentation. supporting documentation so that you will, like to see no, you, you will. When the time comes, I when told you comes. in April, I will be ready to um, make an appointment. I'd like to see some before April. Okay, is it, what's the next discussion? Um, may I ask Chief? Chief, did you mean any of the candidates? Um, no, no. Okay, no. thank you. Well, the wastewater treatment plant talk uh, with Bruce subcommittee. Email. Zach has email on there first. Oh, I apologize. Update on trustee email. Yeah, Mr. Parker, would you please just, uh, I put this in there for you, Christine. Oh, okay. Yes. No, I mean, there has been uh, an issue with getting into the email. Um, I think she kind of addressed it already in her update that Clerks IT part. has yep. a fix or a solution, yep. so that'll be good here. It's just been a little frustrating a couple, couple of months now just to be locked out of the email and no communication, and we've tried to add stuff to the agenda. And told hey, you can't, you gotta email it. So yeah, it's been a little frustrating, but. So you will need to reach out to the clerk. Yeah. We'll what, by, by what means would you like them to reach out to you, Clerk Trapp? A phone call. <laughs> I, phone call. So, so clerk, email. I did call and, and you were email. gonna yes. talk with IT. So yes. do you have information to share with me? Cause I have reached out. Right, well, I gave it in my report. I, Cause the information that I have for you um, refers to all of the trustees. It's the same information. You guys will benefit from what I. So I need to call, it, get in touch with you again then. Is yes. What you're saying. Yes. What I have reported in my clerk's report goes to every trustee here that has not been able to do their email. There are some trustees that they're all set, but that was the purpose of my report is to address all of you. Okay. I misunderstood because in the report you said who haven't reached out to you. And I, and, oh. I, and I did, so I was... My apologies, so I meant to say who have not had a successful update. Okay. 
because we do have some that have had a successful update. Okay, so do I, is it something outside of the program that was being presented? I what do you mean by outside the program? Well, I was under the impression I had to download or get a Yes, certain... per the instructions I gave you, that's exactly what the IT department had asked me to pass along to you as instructions. Um, to download an additional program, no. It was just to add a new email account as outlined in the instructions I gave you. There's no program for you to download. So I don't need 365? No. You just need to add a new email account. And like I've, IT has offered that they will sit down and walk that through you with the, your device, hand them over your device, and they will take care of it for you. And it'll take about three minutes. You don't even have to walk away from your device. Are you trying on a mobile phone or on a computer? No, I was told I needed 365, and I don't have it. That's a medium you can use to access it, but that's not a requirement. And I, that's I worked with IT, yeah. and it, it was really, really simple and made a lot of sense, and it took a minute. Oh. And then when you open your email app, that's one of the options. You can do Outlook, 365, Yahoo, like all those options in the app. That's it, one of them you can choose. It did help me to use a computer. A computer okay. laptop. So I can still get it on the laptop, though. Yes, yes. Did that adequately take care of your item that wasn't your item but was added for you? Yes. Okay. Um, wastewater treatment plant talk yeah, with Bruce uh, Subcommittee. Supervisor Philbrook reached out to <coughs> discuss the wastewater usage again uh, with us. Um, I know a couple years ago me and Matt sat on the subcommittee that went over that. I talked to Matt earlier and he said he'd be willing to sit back on it. He'd be willing to open up back up the subcommittee. To have discussions with um, mm -hmm. with Bruce for the usage of the wastewater. So you asking to form another subcommittee? Re okay. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Who was on that committee? Before? It was me, Matt, and <clears throat> President, former President yeah. uh, Melzon. I think it's beneficial to have the president if anyone's opposed. Yeah. I think me yeah. and Matt have the numbers and went over a lot of the stuff in the Very past. Very helpful to have the president. Yeah. So. <laughs> Using any leverage or not? We're going to have discussions about the usage. I'm sure we'll want to have a discussion with uh, Al at some point and uh, get some more information. And Might anywhere. have to involve HRC also. Yeah. So, you need a motion? Uh, yeah. I mean, if I could, I'd make a motion to reform the wastewater subcommittee uh, with myself, Mr. Edwards, and President Posnanski, if she'd be willing. <laughs> Second. I would accept. More committee. <laughs> we got rid of one today. <laughs> All in favor of reforming the wastewater subcommittee? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion that concludes adjourn. our business. Second. Motion by CARE, support by Fowler, ending at 852. All in favor? Aye. 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 I oppose. Any post. <laughs> 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 <laughs>